It's Miss Stacy from Tiny Church here. I'm here with uh, my husband, Jason. Say hello, Jason. Hello. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, yes. And of course, we have Daphne with us. Um, if we were all together at church, we would be having a wonderful time together. We were going to have a potluck, lots of yummy food. We would have an Easter egg hunt. But this is the closest we can get. At least we can see each other and join together through this video. So happy Easter. It is a very, very wonderful day. Okay, now I bet you probably all have a question. Where is Cyril? Well, I want Daphne's going to show you something. I told Cyril and Daphne that after we were done with our lesson today, we would have an Easter egg hunt just in the house. Because even though we can't be together and go places, we can still have fun in our own homes. And I hope that you and some of your family members are gonna do some fun things. So anyway, I told Cyril and Daphne that we were gonna have an Easter egg hunt when we, done, when we were done. And I got them these really cool pails to collect their eggs in. And Daphne's going to show you hers. Isn't that pretty? Can you see the little chicks on it? Daphne's very excited. But unfortunately, Cyril did something with his bucket. Is he over there, Jason? Can I, can we see the kid? Can we show the kids what the problem is? Oh no, Cyril, what did you do? <laughs> Cyril got his bucket stuck on his head. So we've been trying and trying to get the bucket off. We're gonna give it one more go. And then if we can't get it off, Jason is gonna take Cyril and he's gonna get a stick of butter and he's gonna grease them all up and he's gonna try to slip the bucket off, okay? So let's give it one more try. Come on, one, two, three. Eee, come on, you pull that way, Jason, you pull that way. Oh, no, it's not budging. All right, Jason, would you take Cyril and, 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 and butter him up and see if you can get that thing off his head? Sure. Okay, and I guess um, Daphne and I will just have to do the lesson without you. Cyril, be brave. It's all going to be fine, okay? Okay, we'll see you two in a little bit. Okay. All right, so I hope that you all got to see um, Miss Bree's video from last week. It was such a great job and I loved it when she sang Puff the Magic Dragon. That was so awesome. So last week, just to remember, it was a very, very sad story, wasn't it? Yeah, it made poor Daphne very sad. Poor Jesus died. He died on the cross. And everyone who loved him was so very, very sad. And that's where last week's story ended. Um, but you know what? We are going through some difficult times right now, aren't we? We can't be together. We can't go to school. Um, we can't see our friends. These are very strange and confusing times. But as we're going to see in our story today, um, sometimes sad, difficult times can have happy unexpected, amazing, wonderful endings, okay? Now, before we start, I want to talk about something with you. In the story that we're going to read, there are some women followers of Jesus's who are very important in the story. Now, I'm bringing this up because Jesus had 12 disciples. The disciples were Jesus' closest followers and friends. Say the word with me, disciple. You try it, Daphne. Disciple! Well done. Now, all of these 12 disciples, Jesus' closest 
followers and friends who helped him. Guess what? They were all men. What do you think about that? You've probably heard of some of their names. There was Simon Peter, James and John, Judas, Thomas. Um, oh, here's a good bit of homework for you. When we're done with this video, try to get your grown-ups to see if you can find out the name of all of Jesus' 12 disciples. That would be great. I could only think of four or five of them, but there were 12. The reason I'm bringing this up is I don't want you to think that Jesus only had men followers. Lots of all different types of people followed Jesus. And he had women followers and they were just as important. And you'll see in the story that we're about to read that they had a very important job to do. Now, so Jesus died on the cross and a very wealthy man took Jesus's body and he put it in a tomb. Now, a tomb is somewhere where people are buried when they die. And in Jesus's time, very rich people would have tombs cut into the side of hillsides. And then they would roll a big stone across the front of it to, um, to make it secure and safe. So this man took Jesus' body and put Jesus' body in the man's own tomb and then rolled the big stone over the front of it. Now these stones were so big, they could weigh up to two tons. That is as much as two full-grown elephants. Well, here's an interesting thing. Jesus' women followers wanted to go to his body because in those days they would bring special perfumes and herbs and special cloths to um, take care of the body and wrap it up nicely for burial. And um, it was a sign of love and respect. So Jesus' followers, these women in our story, are going to go to the tomb to perform this last act of love for Jesus. But guess what? There was a great big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb that weighed as much as two giant elephants. Have you ever seen an elephant? If an elephant doesn't want to move, I don't know how you get it to move. So let's open our story, our Bible story books, and see what happens. Okay, so you've got your story books here. Now our story today, help me find it, Daphne. Oh, these books are big and heavy, aren't they? Our story is called The Empty Tomb and it is on page 482. For those of you who are younger and don't know your page numbers yet, up that high, that's pretty high, isn't it? Page 482. 82. I'll show you the page. Okay, can you see? Here's the tomb right here. Thank you, Daphne. And here are the women. Can you see they're carrying things? Those are the perfumes and the special things they're bringing to help get Jesus's body ready. Um, and make sure you see Squiggles. Can you find Squiggles? He's there. They all look very sad and serious, don't they? Because they have a very sad and serious job to do. But because they loved and respected and followed Jesus, they were gonna do it. So let's read our story. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with the first light of the sun but the women didn't notice the sky. They hurried to the cave that contained Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, led the way. Two others, Salome and Joanna, carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. Okay, we're gonna turn the page. 
Make sure you see squiggles there. When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Uh-oh, they had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening to the cave. How would they move it? Remember the two elephants? The women kept going to the cave anyway. As they came closer, the women could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They peeked inside. Okay, I'm going to show you the page. Make sure you look for squiggles, our friend. Can you see them peeking inside? Wow, we. Okay. <clears throat> they peeked inside. Ooh, it was dark in there. Brrr, it was cold in there. Drip, drop, it was damp in there. What? It was empty in there. Jesus was gone. Wow. An angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. An angel is like a messenger from God. A glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. The women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus is in there. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the disciples. The angel told Jesus' women followers to go and tell the, twelve, the 11 now uh, followers of Jesus, the disciples. The women did not delay. They ran to tell Jesus' friends what they had seen and heard. Wow, that's amazing. We're going to turn our page again. Oof! Mary bumped into a man, tripped and fell at his feet. Let's look at the picture. One of Jesus' followers called Mary, and you see squiggles there too, she tripped over. And she landed at someone's feet. Wow. Let's read some more and see whose feet they were. So Mary bumped into a man, tripped and fell at his feet. Wait, she knew those feet. A familiar hand reached out to help her. Wait, she knew that hand. She looked up. Yes. She knew that smile. It was Jesus. Hello, friends, Jesus said. Jesus was really alive. The women hugged his feet and shouted with joy. If you look closely at the picture of Jesus' feet, do you notice he's got an owie on his feet? That happened on the cross. They hurt Jesus' hands and feet. That must have been really painful. But you know what? Don't matter now, because Jesus was really alive. Go tell the others the good news that I am alive, Jesus said. I will meet them in Galilee. Galilee is the place where Jesus grew up and did most of his teaching and his miracles there. I can't wait to see them again, Jesus said. The women had a new job to do. They had to tell everyone Jesus was alive. Wow. Can you see Squiggles and Mary in the picture? They look so happy. Remember how sad they had been? It was a very, very sad, terrible time for them. They had a serious job to do, to go and look after Jesus' dead body. But this story has an amazing, happy ending. Okay, now we're going to put our story Bible down and we're going to get our full Bible out. Now remember we've learned that the Bible is a great big book, but it's made up of lots of smaller books. And our Bible verse today is from the book of Matthew. Okay, so it is Matthew 
chapter 28, verse 6. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Let's say that together. I'll read it one more time. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Okay? You're going to help me, Daphne? He is not here. He is not here. He has risen. He has risen, just as he said. Just as he said. Wow, well done. That was awesome. Okay. Well, we are going to finish up in a little bit. I'm just going to see if Jason has managed to get the bucket off of Cyril's head. I hope he does. Wow, Cyril, I'm so happy to see you. Wow, I bet that's a relief to get that off your head, isn't it? Yeah, wow. Daphne's so happy to see you. I'm sorry that you missed our lesson. Were you able to hear any of it? You still smell a bit buttery. Mm, that's actually a pretty nice smell. He kind of smells like um, cookies or something. Okay, so we've learned a lot today. We've learned that a very sad story and a very difficult sad time can have a happy ending. And even though we are going through difficult times right now, um, oh, no, not again, please. No, no, no. Even though we are going through a difficult time, I think that we are going to be okay when we're on the other side of this. And I cannot wait until we are all back together at church. So we're going to say a closing prayer, and then Daphne and Cyril are going to do their Easter egg hunt. Oh, and the last very important thing we learned today is let's not put our heads in our Easter buckets and baskets, right? Right, okay, here we go. Let Come on, Cyril, you be good. I know you can do it. All right, here we are. Are we ready? Lord God, thank you for sending your son, for raising him up. Against death he won. We thank you for sending your word, for raising us up. Good news we have heard. Amen. Okay, that's our lesson for today. Happy Easter. I, oh, naughty. I hope you have some good food to eat. I hope you have some fun. We're off for an Easter egg hunt. We will see you la <laughs> later. No, no. <laughs>